Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has hit that subscribe button for me and the like button. I really appreciate it. Also love all your questions that you've been sending me. That's been really, really great. And I'm always happy to answer them. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that button for me. I really appreciate it. And let's get started. So today we're going to look at AB Psychology 3.2, Physical Development Across the Lifespan. We are specifically going to look at the CED question number two in this video. I've done another video for uh, question number one and a video for question three and four. There are four CD questions for this section. So it's really important to look at all of them to get all the necessary essential knowledge that you need for the exam. So let's get started. On this slide, you're going to find all the key terms that you will need for 3.2 of this section of unit three. I always do a separate video with the key terms, with the definitions and real life examples. Of course, you're going to hear some of these definitions when we talk about the essential knowledge, but specifically really important for you to be able to write your flashcards with your definitions and your examples so that you can really know them and be able to apply them on test day. So CED question number two is explain how physical development in infancy and childhood apply to behavior and mental processes. So let's dive into all the essential knowledge you'll need to know to be able to answer this question. So let's start with physical development in infancy and childhood and, and, and its impact on behavior and mental processes. So we're just going to look at an overview of physical development first. The main point, physical development during infancy and childhood happens in a set order order or a set sequence, but the timing can vary for each child. For example, learning to walk, learning to crawl, grasping at objects. This development is important because it allows children to gain independence and interact with their world in new ways. So let's talk about fine and gross motor coordination. It's an essential part of physical development in children. These skills enable kids to interact with their environment and gain independence. So let's break it down. Let's start with gross motor skills, always with the definition. These involve larger movements that engage bigger muscle groups, for example, walking, running, and jumping, throwing or catching a ball. Why does it matter? Gross motor skills are essential for mobility and coordination, and it allows kids to explore their environment. For example, a toddler learning to walk can now reach toys and explore the house, building confidence and curiosity. So now let's look at fine motor skills. The definition of that is these involve smaller, precise movements, often using hands and fingers. For example, picking up small objects like puzzle pieces or holding a pencil or a crayon for drawing or writing. Why does that matter? Fine motor skills are crucial for activities like writing, drawing, and self-care. For example, buttoning a shirt. For example, a, pre a preschooler practicing how to tie their shoes develops independence and problem-solving skills. So why are these skills important? First of all, it gains independence. Mastery of these skills allow children to take care of themselves, so feeding or dressing, things like that. Exploration and learning. These abilities enable kids to interact with their surrounding, enhancing both physical and cognitive development. And these are milestones. Parents and educators often use these skills to track a child's developmental progress. So finding gross motor skill and coordination are key milestone in child's growth. By understanding and supporting these skills, we can help kids become more confident, capable, and ready to learn. So now let's have a look at the incredible feature of newborns, reflexes. So these are automatic behaviors that help infants survive and give us clues about their development. So what are reflexes in infancy? Reflexes are an automatic response to certain stimuli. They're present at birth and they serve as early indicators of a normal nervous system development. So why do reflexes matter? Well, they play a crucial role in helping babies adapt to the world outside of the womb. And pediatricians will use these checks to ensure that the baby's nervous system is functioning properly. Let's have a look at one example in particular, the rooting reflex. So this is when a baby's cheek is touched, they turn their head towards the touch and start sucking. This reflex helps babies find their mother's breast or a bottle for feeding. This ensures that they get proper nutrition that they really need for growing. This reflex will typically disappear as babies grow and develop voluntary control over feeding. So there's some other reflexes that we need to look at. One would be the Moro reflex, which is also called the startle reflex. This is when babies flail their arms and legs when they're startled by a loud sound or a sudden movement. The next one is the grasping reflex. Babies automatically grasp anything that's placed in their palm, which helps them hold on to their caregivers. And you can try this with a baby. If you put your hand there, they will hold on to it and they'll grasp onto it. That allows bonding. Stepping reflex, when held upright, their feet were that are touching the surface, they automatically start to make the stepping motion. This is an early precursor to walking. So reflexes in infancy are really fascinating tools for survival and a key indicator to the baby's health and development. So from the rooting reflex that helps with the feeding, 
to the grasping reflex that fosters bonding, these automatic responses are the first steps in a baby's journey to mastering the world. So now we're going to dive into a famous psychology experiment that helps us understand how infants perceive the world, the visual cliff experiment. This study gives insight into how and when babies develop depth perception. So what exactly is the visual cliff experiment? So it is when, it's an experiment that tests an infant's ability to perceive depth. So the goal is to determine if babies can recognize a potential drop-off and respond to it. So why does this matter? Well, depth perception is a critical skill that helps infants navigate their environment safely and make sense of the world around them. So this is how it works. A baby is placed on a platform with a visual cliff. One side of the surface is solid and patterned. The other side has a glass surface under which there's a pattern drop-off that creates the illusion of a cliff. So what are they observing? Babies who perceive depth hesitate or refuse to crawl across the glass, even though it's safe. Babies without depth perception might crawl across the glass without any concern. So most babies, especially those who have started crawling, show hesitation, indicating they can perceive the cliff. So why is this important? Well, depth perception, for example, the study shows that depth perception begins with the development in early infancy, often coinciding with crawling. What about cognitive development? This helps us understand how infants learn to process and respond to visual information. And lastly, the practical implications. This highlights how infants learn to interpret their environment, shaping behaviors like exploring, avoiding danger, and developing spatial awareness. The Visual Cliff Experiment is a landmark study in developmental psychology, showing us how infants perceive and interact with the world. It reminds us that even at a young age, babies are developing critical survival skills like depth perception. So now let's look at the applications to behavior and mental processes. So we're going to start with motor development. So as children develop fine and gross motor skills, they gain more independence, which impacts their ability to interact socially, explore their environment, and learn new skills. Reflexes. Reflexes like rooting reflex are tied to survival and show that the nervous system is developing properly, which is crucial for to further learning and cognitive development. And lastly, perception, the visual cliff. Depth perception helps infants navigate their environment, which is important for safety and exploring new surroundings. This research shows us how early physical abilities can impact learning and behavior. So the key takeaways for this CED question is that motor development is crucial for independence and learning. Reflexes are indicators of healthy physical and mental development and research such as the visual cliff show that even infants have the ability to perceive depths and assess their surroundings. Okay, that's all the essential knowledge that you need to know for 3.2 physical development across the lifespan. This was CED question number two, explain how physical development in infancy and childhood apply to behavior and mental processes. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more psychology information from the CED handbook and everything that you need to know to prepare for the final exam. Thank you so much and see you next time.